This is a book review of Comics Unmasked, Art and Anarchy in the UK. Now this is by Paul Gravett, John Harris Dunning, and this came out in 2014. There's the back, it's 190 pages, and as you can see there, it's British Library. Now this was part of an exhibition that came out in 2014, or thereabouts, went to it, it was an excellent exhibition. So, I didn't buy the book at the time, I must admit, very rarely buy the catalogues and then regret it generally, I sort of buy them uh, later. <laughs> Normally they're more expensive, but luckily this one happened to uh, turn up in my local charity shop and I bought a copy. And um, yeah, absolutely quite interesting. Now, it's a good book, but it's always the curse of all these sort of reference books, especially ones of British comics, is that quite often you read things and you think, oh, I'd love to find out more about that. And they're so obscure, so hard to find. We really have not made a great sort of thing. Rebellion uh, recently, they've been bringing out loads and loads of brilliant volumes. But of course, there is a vast amount of comic history in the UK. I mean, there's stuff 19th century, 20th century, early 20th century, so many comics that just basically disappeared. Unless you've got access to some like comic museum or access to the British Library, you're going to find it very hard, unless you're a very serious collector, to find copies of some of these things. You obviously can. I mean, Illustrated London News, I'm certain people have got copies of these. But your average person, like me, is going to struggle to find much. If you find this is great to see examples, and it's great, but it always annoys because then you think, oh, I wish I could find out more. And it's very, very hard. And also sometimes when you find, often there's been books that came out, say, like in the 1970s, by about this Illustrated London News, and there might be hundreds of examples. But of course now it's out of print. Suddenly you look at it, the price is like £950 for the book. And you think, I'm not going to be buying that one anytime soon. So uh, this is the problem. And so it's, a, it's great to see these things. And I love reading about it. But it is slightly depressing when you can't actually get any more. And the same with these sort of things. Great examples here, Tales from the Crypt, and you've got other things. But of course, Tales from the Crypt there, these books did not turn up in the UK, particularly, well, apparently, there was like, this was Arnold Miller, and produced only a couple of uh, issues of this. I didn't realise it was so few, and you can read some of the things and you think, wow, it'd be great. But a lot of these things are fairly hard to get. And, I mean, you can find them, obviously, on eBay, etc. But sometimes they do go for an awful lot of money. However, that's a minor issue. <laughs> you just, it's, I just find it slightly depressing occasion when you want to find out more and you just, it's a struggle to find out more. You've got, like, here, Hookjaw, obviously from Action Comics. Great example. Now, I think that there's a, there is a volume that's available of Hookjaw, so... Uh, I might be wrong on that, but uh, it looks uh, quite an interesting comic. However, I must admit, I was never into the film, Jaws, so, uh, but it's uh, got lots of, didn't realise things like here, impressive 250,000 copies here for the, uh, for action. Now, another another example here, Life of an Actress, and that's quite an impressive little display there, lovely illustration, and it's got lots of text about it, and obviously lots of information. But this is 14th of November, nine, uh, 1825, in a Scottish fortnightly 10th issue. I mean, I imagine that you are not going to find copies of that on eBay that often. They might turn up, but I'm certain it's not going to be a regular occurrence. So you've got lots of things. that, that And this sort of thing, Ali Sloper, Sloper, I have to say it, I'm not certain. Sounds absolutely fascinating and really, yeah, some really brilliant artwork as well. But again probably tricky to find but it's fascinating to see examples here and now it's another curse it actually is one of the curses of this is that you uh, do find out books and you think oh you know what i haven't read that and so and then you go online and you can find a copy and that you think oh i must buy that one now so it sort of ends up being a sort of uh, searching off on different ones and it's like this one varunshka with edward heath Heroin. I remember that in the shop. Heroin. <laughs> it's just vaguely familiar anyway. Maybe I just remember it from the exhibition more than that. And there's lots more examples all the way through of some really great artwork and great books that, um, well, I can't show that page. <laughs> there's actually some uh, erotic sections in here. It's actually split into different sections. You've got the political side, 
heavy political, obviously various riots, etc. And then you've got some uh, sexual section and obviously there's some imagery that uh, perhaps can't be shown on YouTube videos. But there's uh, this one, I love this one. Life of George and Lynn. I remember that one. Uh, I don't know if they're available. Uh, thing. I, I do remember that series of uh, cartoon strips in the, in the Sun. Not that I bought the Sun. But it's uh, during the 76. I... Uh, my mum was in a news agent, and I would often just, and also I delivered the newspaper, so I'd often read, <laughs> much to the annoyance probably of people getting their deliveries. However, Modesty Blaze, Martial Law, there's lots and lots of examples all the way through this. And also, I love this bit, it's a, weirdly, there's a, a revolver one, which looks great, revolver number one, uh, that's uh, Rogan Gosh. Yeah, Brendan McCarthy. Now, I recently looked at Brendan McCarthy's work, and I, have to admit, I must admit, it was, uh, yeah, I wasn't so enamoured by it, but this one actually looks very good. So clearly I was being very unfair to his artwork. I, I just initially, I thought, oh, I was. Uh... However, H.P. Lovecraft, all the books, I love those book covers. I've got all the H.P. Lovecrafts. I love those ones. And also it features a lot about Dave McKean, which is great. There's some really exa brilliant examples of that. And also Misty at the back. I love the Misty comics. Misty comics, now Rebellion have been bringing out a number of uh, works of uh, from Misty. And uh, now hopefully they will bring out many, many more because clearly there's a vast amount of material because there are about 100 odd issues of Misty. And, and they're also pretty hard to get as well. They're not, in, you know, they're expensive. Eight, eight or nine pounds an issue kind of thing, if not more, probably. But uh, it's got some uh, mentions here. Misty issue one, April 1978. And then this one I didn't realise, which I must admit is slightly annoying. Dave McKean, Club Salsa. Apparently it was an online web comic. Uh, apparently it says that it's not, not there anymore. And you think, oh. So I love Dave McKean's work. So it's great that there's some examples here. And... Uh, because there's a, a Facebook group that, of Dave McKean fans, and I must admit it's uh, always a great place to check out Dave McKean's work. I love Dave McKean's work, full stop. And that's it. Weirdly, there's no bibliography. It's very odd. But in many ways, probably good because it doesn't it means that uh, there's not lots and lots of books. I think, oh, well, that'd be interesting to find out more about. And there's also references to lots and even in the index, you look through, oh, I must check out that one, or must check out that one. Also, like I say, Paul Gravitz, but it's got a list of all of all his various books, and likewise, uh, John Harris done in the bottom there. Actually, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable book. This is definitely worth checking out, as are lots of other ones. One of the ones I like, I must admit, 60 Years of Japanese Comics, the manga one, brilliant. There's also uh, graphic novels, stories to change your life, superb as well. Also, Mammoth's Book of British, uh, Best Crime Comics, that's superb. And Thousand One Comics You Must Read Before You Die. I love that. That's one of my favourite volumes. Thoroughly brilliant. Again, a terrible reference book because you look through it and think, oh, I must go and check up that one. And again, you have the same problem. Are these books available? But it's uh, brilliant. Totally recommended book. Love this.